All right, it is incredibly important in digital art that you understand your pixel resolution. And pixel resolution is a product of both its physical size, so it's inches, height and width, and the number of pixels per inch. One nice tool that is in both Photoshop and PhotoP are what are called the rulers. So to turn on the rulers on your Mac computers, you can just hit Command R. Now, Command R will show you these rulers, but they are in pixel dimensions. Right. So my image is now 2,400 pixels by 3,000 pixels. Because 2,400 divided by 300 pixels per inch is 8 inches. In Photoshop, we'll set the rulers to inches, but you're not able to do that in PhotoP. So let's check your image size really quickly. You want your image size to be 8 by 10 by 300. You want it to be this before you bring in any other images. So that's why I picked my favorite image, made it this size, made it on a canvas that was 8 by 10 inches. When you see these, this grid, this gray checkerboard, that means that there are no pixels there. So what I have are no pixels, white pixels, black pixels, and probably a bunch of gray pixels if I zoom in. And there are two ways to zoom in. You can use the magnifying glass and just click, 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 click. And I do have a lot of like degradation in this image, but I'll show you how to clean that up. And to zoom out, you just do command minus. So you can also just use the shortcut of command plus to zoom in, command minus to zoom out. To fit it all on your screen, very helpful, command zero. And they're all right next to each other. Command zero, command minus, command plus. I use my thumb, I'm right-handed, I use my thumb for the command, and I use my middle finger for plus and minus and zero. Okay, now moving on. I only have one image in. If you don't see what I see, this is the default setup for PhotoP. What you need to do is click on Window and click on your layers to make sure you can see your layers. This is true in Photoshop as well. If you ever need to see something that you don't see, look under Window and just check it. Okay, now what I'm going to do, remember I don't like to do full screen because full screen doesn't give me access to my desktop. So instead, I'm not in full screen. I want to shrink my window a little bit in PhotoP so that I can also see my open folder. And I can always navigate to it. It's on my desktop. It's here. This is my personal computer, so this is pretty messy. But I open up my exercise, try to stay organized. Now I'm going to bring in something else. Let's bring in this color image. Drag and drop it in it comes in on a new layer. And honestly, it should be pretty big within the space. It might not fill at all, but it should not be tiny. Because if it's tiny, it means you're not a thousand by a thousand pixels, right? That you accidentally saved an image that's too small. As soon as you bring it in, do you see this, what's called a transform box around it? Very much like resizing something in Canvas. That allows you to drag it and move it. It actually even allows you, if you click right outside of the, the anchor points, to rotate it. And if you want to get really creative with it, it allows you to flip it. All right. Now, I'm looking for black and white line art. So I'm going to kind of resize it, place it. But I don't know exactly how I'm going to put them together yet. And I want to do all of them. Ooh, got so many things, things. So I'm going to bring in all five layers before I start editing the layers. And they're just going to stack up on top of each other. And then when you're happy with their placement and their size, it's okay if things are left off the edge, because we'll clean that up. Then you hit return. So whenever you have a transform box, You have to hit return to be able to do anything else. You have to approve the transformation. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, not on the image, but on the tools within PhotoP. 
So the way to do that is you click on the URL bar and then you use plus and minus. And you see how my image stays the same size, but my tools get bigger or smaller. You guys see that? This is so you can see the, my, my options here. Now, if I want to zoom in on the image, I have to click in the working screen, right? So now I can do plus minus, and now my tools stay the same size, but my image gets bigger or smaller. Remember, command zero to fit it all on. Now, the problem is these images are black and white, but they have white pixels, and one of them has colored pixels, and those colored pixels and white pixels are blocking the black from underneath. So when I'm ready to start editing these, to clean them up, to start compositing them together, I need to make sure I have five. I do have five. I actually have six here. But no, I don't. I just have the five. And this is my PSD. Okay. You can do more than five, but you have to have a minimum of five things you're putting together. Now, I'm going to save it. And because I already saved it as a PSD, it already has the name I want. It's already saved in the place I want. Right? Or it might not be. So I'll show you. So if I save it again to the desktop, I always want you to save things to the desktop. And then while you're working in the class, just leave it on the desktop. Then by the end of class, organize it into your folder. Does that make sense? Just like if you're making a collage, everything's on your table until the end of the time you're working on it. And then you kind of put everything away. So now if I check my desktop, I have PSD here. But you see how that doesn't, doesn't have the color yellow? I'm going to color it yellow because in my folder, in exercise one, there is also a PSD. But this PSD is older than that PSD. So if I'm in Photopea and I open it up, hey, Jonathan, what I would do is say file open. And I can open that other PSD. Thank you, sir. And you'll see that it only has one layer. So why do we save things as a PSD? A PSD file is a file type, unlike a JPEG, unlike a PNG, that will save multiple layers so that we can edit them individually. If you have multiple copies of the same file, you want to know which one is the most recent. Max make that a little bit easier by, if I do this, if I try to move this into where a file with the same name and the same file format, it will ask if I want to replace the older one with the newer one. And in this case, I do, right? I'm going to actually replace it, or it will give you an option to keep both. But what I'm going to actually have you do is just keep your PSD on the desktop until the end of class. Because every time you save it, I just want you to save it from PhotoP to the desktop. And so the way you can save, so I'll make a little change here. I'm going to transform this. I'll show you how that works. And just change its size a little bit. And then hit return. Now I've made a change to it that isn't in my last save file. I can go to file and save, but it also will teach me the shortcut. So if you want to update your save at any time, you just hit command S. So I'm going to hit Command S. This is where I want you to be by the end of today. So we have until 1210 to get here, where we have a PSD file saved that is 8 by 10 inches by 300 pixels per inch and has at least five different layers. Now what we're going to do with that is we have to turn that into our project. Our project is all about layering those up and making them interesting. One way to do that is to stretch them. And a, an important thing before we can even see how they look is to clean them up so we're just seeing the black lines. So let's go through. I'm going to turn off the eyeballs on all of my layers except the one I want to work on. And this one is mostly black and white, but not only black and white. And if you look at the tools, there are tools, let's see, where are they? This is, I have to make it a little bit smaller so I can see them all. There are tools like an eraser, right? And you might think, okay, I use an eraser, it should erase that white stuff. But it doesn't. 
and this is important, it doesn't erase it because when you bring objects on from the outside and you drag and drop them, this is incredibly helpful, it brings them in as something called a smart object. Smart as in smarter than most users, right? This is the computer trying to protect user error. So when you drag and drop a file in, it's going to keep its original pixel resolution, no matter how you size it within the program. That protects every pixel in the file. So you're not able to erase it. You're not able to make significant changes to it until you change it from what's called a smart object to a raster object. Raster means pixel-based. So we are going to rasterize it. And you can do this with vectors as well. When you bring them into a pixel-based program, a raster program like Photopea, you turn them into pixels. So how do we rasterize? You can try to erase it and then say rasterize it first, or you can just right click on the layer itself and click on rasterize. How does that look different? I'm gonna zoom in on the tool so you can see it. <laughs> okay, so if we look at our layers, I zoomed in a little too much. So you see how this is black box in the thumbnail image of the layers. But when I rasterize it, that black box goes away. So that black box means it's a smart object, which means you can't fully edit it. So I want you to go through and to rasterize each of these images that you dragged in. Your background image is already rasterized. So if I right click on that, you won't have the option. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll zoom out on the tools again so you can see. I wanna see all five of them, layers. I'm gonna turn off the eyeball. The eyeball obviously doesn't delete them, it just makes it so I don't see it. I'm gonna hit Command Zero to fit it all on the screen. So now that it's rasterized, yes, I can use the eraser and I can erase. But that seems like a really odd way to try to do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna clean up this image. And to do that, I'm going to go to Image Adjustments. So I'm going to leave that up. There are three image adjustments we're going to use in this class. We're going to learn the first one for this exercise. It has to do with blacks, whites, and grays. What you can think of as brightness contrast, but we're going to use a better command than brightness contrast. We're going to use Adjustments Levels. This gives us what's called a histogram of the blacks and whites. The white pixels here, the black pixels here, everything else here. So these, these yellow pixels, red pixels, gray pixels, those are all considered in the mid-range. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up all those grays by moving the white slider to the left. And you can see how the grays disappear as I do that. So then I'm going to take the black slider and I'm going to move that. And then I have to get it to the point where my image is as clean as it can be. So this is under image adjustments levels. On the layer you have selected, and you can actually do this on a rasterized layer, but then it would be what's called a smart adjustment or a smart filter, and you don't want that. You want to rasterize it first, so you're actually changing the pixels. Then I say OK, and now when I zoom in on it, I can see that it's pretty cleanly black and white. If I want to see what it looked like before, I can always go back in my history or hit Command-Z. So it went from this to this. Nice and sharp. But I still have this problem. I still have all these white pixels, and I still have this. So one way you can erase, besides using the eraser tool, is what's called the selection tools. And I'm going to use, I'll just use the first one. This is a rectangular marquee. I can draw a box around it, and then I can hit delete. That will get rid of the color. Now, is there a way I can select all the white and delete it? Magic wand. Magic wand. So there are a few different selection tools. They're all at the top. When I learned Photoshop back in 1994, um, my teacher said, 
using Photoshop well is all about making good selections.